Welcome everybody to the stream, welcome to Daily Crypto Technical Analysis. On this live stream, we are going to do Bitcoin Technical Analysis, Ethereum Technical Analysis. We are going to look at the altcoin trades that we took in previous Daily Crypto Technical Analysis live streams. We are going to look at the altcoin trading ideas for today. And we also have some very interesting articles to look at. Ethereum is on track to have a higher annual transaction volume than Bitcoin for the first time. Very interesting picture right there, which we are going to look at later. Then, of course, active Bitcoin addresses at highest since 2017's 20k price record all or all time high. Then the new one for the first time since 2018, Bitcoin balances on exchanges fell below 2.5 million. And then the last one is something about BitMEX. Uh, they are adding coins and reducing fees. Will BitMEX survival efforts help despite the mandatory KYC? We are go going to look at all of those news today, guys. But before we even start, I would like to welcome everyone on the stream. Behrat Kalantari, good evening community, welcome man to the stream. Abdul, Abdul Rehman Madni, hello, welcome man to the stream. Nai Maliqui, hello hypers, welcome man to the stream. Mina, Minatin768, hello. Kalazans, MTG alerts, hello everyone, welcome man to the stream. Uh, Latavish Gardner, greetings from Atlanta, GA. Let's get this crypto, let's get it, man. Uh, Flash. Hey King, how are you today? We are ready. Uh, I'm feeling amazing. Uh, Bitcoin just did something that I mentioned in the video and what I was expecting is going to happen with Bitcoin. Uh, right now, of course, we are going to see what is going to happen and we are going to try to make another prediction if we are going to maybe once again bounce to the upside here or if we are going maybe to see uh, another pull to the downside and maybe retest 11, uh, I mean 12,500 US dollar support level. Welcome Melchiat to the stream, Zakin VNL. Hey bro, welcome man to the stream. Uh, so like I said, we are going to look at the Bitcoin price prediction and also Ethereum price prediction. Uh, but before we are going to look at Bitcoin and Ethereum, I would like to look at the altcoin trades that we took in previous daily crypto technical analysis live streams. Then we will go through the altcoin trading ideas for today. And of course, then the king of technical analysis, Bitcoin and also Ethereum. So let's start with RSR BTC. Uh, still holding this position. Uh, it haven't touched my uh, target here, so hopefully it will bounce off of the 50 exponential moving average on the hourly time frame, and we are going to see our target, which is 47.3% uh, away from our entry point, and I'm still holding this position. Next, and the next one for the altcoin trading ideas for today is a INJ BTC. INJ BTC. BTC on Binance. INJ BTC. Uh, spike in volume, very new coin because of that I would not like to trade this one. Next one is TCT BTC, TCT BTC on Binance. Uh, this could be the first wave, but it looks like that maybe, uh, no, I'm not going to actually trade this one uh, because we are in a major downtrend and because of that personally, uh, I would write, uh, I would avoid this one, which is TCT BTC, ARC BTC is the next one. And then we are almost at the end right now. Uh, altcoins are not uh, popping so much that I, I would be expecting because of Bitcoin, uh, but uh, I'm still trading them if I see a perfect opportunity. Also, I would not like to trade this one because it looks like just a spike, another spike as you can see right there, another spike here, a dump immediately and also this big spike and also a dump. So because of that, I would personally not trade this one right now. Uh, next one is... Let's see, EGLD, in, and also the last one. EGLD is the last one, and then we are going straight to Bitcoin and also to Ethereum technical analysis. Uh, EGL, EGLD BTC, um, major downtrend. Personally, I would also avoid this one. Uh, I think we, all, yeah, we already talked about this one uh, in the past, and I was drawing this uh, destiny triangle here, uh, and because it has a higher probability of breaking to the downside, we broke to the downside. So. Uh, right now it is trying to recover here, but I'm not going to trade this one. So no, um, no altcoin trades for today and I'm still holding RSR BTC, which is nice and hopefully it will hit my target. 
Um, but let's start right now with Bitcoin and also Ethereum. Uh, hit that thumbs up button, folks. Thank you very much, Latavish Gardner. Nine Maliqui, bro, can you look at Ren? Uh, we are going to look at altcoins and your requests um, later. Be, uh, but first of all, I would like to do Bitcoin technical analysis and also uh, Ethereum technical analysis. So what is currently happening with Bitcoin? Uh, on yesterday's live stream, we were talking about this bullish, I mean bearish channel that Bitcoin was forming, as you can see right there. Uh, we were still going to the upside. We retested the resistance level, which was the monthly CPR level, exactly hit. And once again, we got rejected. Uh, in the video, I said, all, or in the also in the yesterday's live stream, I said that this could easily break to the downside because it is a bearish channel, higher probability we are going to see a downwards move. Right now, uh, like I also said in the video, that I would be expecting Bitcoin first, first of all to retest at least this support level at 12,725 US dollars, which we did right now. And because of that, I am currently holding a long position on Bitcoin and also on Ethereum. But here on Bitcoin, I actually entered only, like I said in the video, exactly if only 50% of my entire position that I am planning to open. So, like I said in the video, I am planning to open a long position if I am going to see a higher high and higher low form on lower time frames. That will mean that right now, if we are going to bounce here, if we are going to see a higher high, and then of course another higher low needs to be formed before I would uh, like to enter another 50% uh, on of my long position on Bitcoin. Currently, like I said in the video, because we retested the support level right there, my limit order for Bitcoin was exactly 12,750 US dollars. Uh, and I think with the wick right there, yeah, with the wick, almost exactly, man. Uh, so when you are trading those support and resistances, sometimes uh, this can happen. You can see that if you usually set uh, the, if you usually set the exact, uh, limit order as the res uh, as the support level sometimes it's not hit and because of that all of my take profits all of my uh, all of my uh, limit orders for entries are a little bit away from my entry point and because of that uh, as you can see right now i got lucky and i got into the trade uh, and because of that, if I would set my long entry at 12,725 US dollars, which is exactly the support level, I of course right now would not be uh, in the trade and maybe I would miss uh, a pump to the, I mean a pull to the upside if of course right now we are going to pull to the upside. Uh, we are going to see if we are going to retest this support level, maybe like I also said in the video, uh, but um, like I said in the video, but we are uh, oh, hopefully we are just going to bounce here and once again pull to the upside. But like I said, uh, also we can still retest 12,500 US dollars, which is a very nice support level. And I think that if this is going to get retested, we are pretty much almost sure going to bounce off of it and hopefully then see another nice pull to the upside uh, on the Bitcoin price. Uh, mine was 12,755 get filled as well. Nice, man. So currently we are almost... Uh, pretty much, yeah, $100. Uh, I mean, Bitcoin made $100 move already. So we are nicely in the profits already right now. But of course, like I said, I it's only 50% of my position that I'm planning to open. Uh, and because of that, uh, I am still currently holding only 50%. Uh, hopefully, like I said, we are going to see a higher high formed here, which will mean that I will enter uh, even, uh, I mean, uh, once again, 50%, which will then be 100% of my position that I'm planning to open. Uh, or maybe even we are going to pull to the downside where uh, I would also open here another 50%, which will mean that may, my average price would be around 12,600 US dollars. Uh, because I open 50% here, 50% here, of course. Uh, if you divide this by two, you will have the around 12,600 US dollars average price if Bitcoin is going to once again pull to the downside uh, in the upcoming future. Uh, what leverage do you use on long shorts? So um, in my opinion, the leverage doesn't really matter what leverage you use. Uh, I use the calculator which calculates uh, what leverage I need to use and also what um, uh, what position size I need to use. Uh, if you want to know what uh, calculator I am using, go to Kite Crypto YouTube channel because I am using this, uh, I mean, I am using the calculator from him. Uh, go to Kite Crypto, Kite Crypto YouTube channel I, and I am using his calculator actually for the position, uh, for the positions. Go to his description and here you will have the risk to reward formula calculator. Use this one, download it on your computer. It's an Excel uh, file and it pretty much calculates the position size for you and also the uh, leverage. So in my opinion, the leverage, what leverage you are using is not that important. Uh, of course, too high leverage is not recommended, uh, but uh, usually my leverage is always below 10x. 
um, that is what is usually, uh, but like I said, go to the calculator and it will pretty much calculate for you what position size you need and also what leverage you need to use uh, for the trade or the position uh, to be, of course, for example, you need to set 1% or how much you want to risk in the, per trade if your stop loss is hit, uh, for example, 1% one trade, 2% uh, or maybe even 3%, uh, put that in the calculator and it will calculate exactly the position size and also the leverage. What time frame are you looking for the higher high? A uh, higher high lower, I mean, I would be looking at lower time frame. So for example, 30 minute or 15 minute time frame, uh, I would be looking if I see a higher high and higher low being formed on the 30 minute or, or 15 minute time frame, then I would consider entering once again 50% of my position uh, on the long uh, on this long position. Uh, right now, it looks like maybe we are just um, some kind. If you look on lower time frames, for example, on five minute time frame, uh, this could be right now forming because we have a dump. Uh, maybe th this could be actually forming a bear flag, which of course means that if this is going to play out, we are going to once again pull to the downside. Uh, so. Uh, I would expect right now that if this is going to play out, which has a higher probability of actually going to play out, uh, I would expect to once again retest the support level right there, or then of course maybe even drop even lower, uh, which of course we are going to see what is going to happen with this one. Uh, with this one, like I said, because I only enter 50% uh, on there, uh, the risk that I am right now uh, taking is not even high, uh, and because of that I'm not even worried, even if Bitcoin is once again going to retest this level, because here. Uh, we have a very, very high probability of actually bouncing and because of that, uh, this would be then uh, my another 50% of, of, the, of the position open right there if we are, of course, going to once again pull to the downside on the Bitcoin price. But if we are going to, for example, bounce right there uh, because we have the support level also because of the 50, oops, uh, because of the 50 exponential moving average and also the support level right there that I all, or already drew, uh, I would expect that maybe even a bounce could be also possible, uh, which would mean that I am, of course, already holding a long position and then hopefully we are going to pull once again to the upside. In the video I said that my first target would be around 13,400 US dollars at least uh, if this is going to get broken of course we could expect higher prices uh, but like I said this would be my first target if Bitcoin is going to pull to the upside. Uh, about the second target I would not specula speculate right now because uh, if you look at the support and resistances at these areas let me just go on a different um, chart where we have more data available. So if you look, uh, I was drawing somewhere or something before already. So if you look like this, when we were at this level right there, uh, we have 13,400 US uh, dollars pretty much this week right there. And we only have this week. If you look at the price action right there, um, we pretty much do not, do not have any major resistances at this point. So for example, because of that, I would not be uh, setting my second target for right now, but I would be closing 50% of my position at 13,400 US dollars. Because if you look pretty, uh, pretty much uh, the last time that we were trading uh, uh, around those levels here uh, was in 2017 where of course we made another all-time high uh, and because of that here we pretty much don't have any major divergences, uh, I mean divergences, resistances and because of that my second target maybe on Bitcoin could be pretty much 14,000 US dollars or around 13,800. Uh, and because of that in my opinion right now I would not be setting the second target uh, and only close 50% of the position uh, at 13,400 US dollars if we are going to once again, like uh, like I said, pull to the upside. Yo, welcome man, pot to the, uh, to the stream. What's up? Uh, so yeah, first target 13,400, second target uh, not really set right now because like I said, we don't have any major resistances there. Uh, maybe we do have some CPR levels, let me just check real quick. Uh, if we do have, I mean, weekly CPR levels, of course, we do not have because we smashed it. But maybe, yeah, maybe uh, next week we are going to have new CPR levels and then we are going to see what could be our next target or second target on Bitcoin uh, if our first target will be reached. When my first target will be reached, I will move my stop loss to break even point. Uh, that way I will have no risk on the table. Uh, and hopefully then, of course, we are going to still be pulling to the upside. Uh, but first of all, I would like to see, to determine the second target, I would like to see where the CPR levels, weekly CPR levels will be, uh, because I think monthly are not very useful here. Let me just see monthly. I mean, mo oh, monthly is actually 14,000. Uh, 200 US dollars. So maybe this could be your second target, but it is pretty far away from this first target. So uh, maybe your target should be around 300, uh, 13,800 US dollars. Uh, but like I said, first of all, I would like to see monthly, I mean weekly CPR levels where they will be. Uh, and then I will determine my second target on Bitcoin. First target 13,400 if we are going to pull to the upside. Uh, and then we are going to go from there. Uh, like I said, whoa, where are my uh, support and resistances? Let me just go control Z real quick. 
uh, hopefully we oh I uh, they're on this chart yeah uh, so I would expect maybe right now immediate pull to the upside or one step below which would be at around 12,500 US dollars which we have like I said higher probability very high probability in my opinion because exponential moving average support level which was this uh, hat right there is another one and I also think that the uh, fib retracement is also perfectly aligning with this one if I'm correct yeah 0.382 Fibonacci level perfectly aligning with this level so if we go once again to the downside here I would be expecting a bounce here uh, and once again pull to the upside so if I would be setting a stop loss uh, I would set my stop loss pretty much below the support level or below the exponential moving average because if this will get broken uh, then I think we could pretty much retest the uh, third, uh, 12,000 US dollars because of the su support levels right there uh, and because of that uh, I would see that if this is going to get broken I would expect this even to uh, to reach the target of 12,000 around 12,000 US dollars and also here would be a very nice point to enter another long position why because this is a golden pocket because it's between 0.5 and 0.618 Fibonacci level and because of that if Bitcoin price then is going to fall that low this would be also a very nice point where you could be entering another long position on Bitcoin uh, but like I said because this is right now a very high probability we are going to bounce here if of course we are going to pull to the downside I would be like I said entering another 50% of my long position uh, on at this level uh, you think we can see 12,742 oh wow that's low okay uh, so, no, uh, on Bitcoin, pretty much we retested this one already, uh, 12,742 US dollars, and I think 12,666, uh, where is this? This is a little bit lower here. Um, no, I do not think, of course, if we are going to retest once again this level, uh, I think that if we are going to break it, then I think that this level is next. And I don't think that this uh, 12,666 US dollars is that important uh, because if this is going to get broken, I think that we can pretty much pull once again to the downside, maybe bounce off of the 30 exponential moving, I mean, uh, 200 exponential moving average on the 30 minute time frame, uh, where you could set some of the, uh, like I said, 50% of my long position will be opened if this area here will be uh, retested. Uh, but right now, I think that maybe another pull to the downside is possible. Why? Because some uh, we could be forming on lower time, uh, time frames, like I said before, some kind of a bear flag. Uh, because we pull to the downside, we are pulling once again to the upside, where we could right now once again pull to the downside. Uh, of course, we can still be pulling to the upside, which because this is a support level right there, uh, and because that I already opened 50% of my long position on Bitcoin at 12,750 US dollars. Uh, this is my long entry on Bitcoin, pretty much the same on Ethereum, but on Ethereum is a little bit different. Uh, we are going to talk about Ethereum in a moment, but before we do that, I would like to look also at the indicators and let's see uh, what we can see on the indicators. So, first indicator that I would like to look is the Ehler Stochastic CG Oscillator, and this indicator actually signals to me that we also have some chances uh, that we are going to bounce here. Why? Because I talked in the video about this about this um, about this double bottom pattern that is is forming on the three hourly time frame pretty much the same on the four hourly as you can see right there we have some some kind of a double bottom if we zoom in as you can see right there but on the three hourly is a little bit more visible and because of that i would like to look at the three hourly two double bottom right there we also have the exponential moving average 18 exponential moving average acting as the support level or pretty much if you look on the hourly time frame we also have the support level of the 50 exponential moving average on the hourly time frame and because of that uh, we also have the chance right now to bounce here and once again pull to the upside uh, on the Bitcoin price. And like I said, because of that, I entered 50% of my long position at this point. Uh, hopefully uh, in the evening, I mean uh, at the night uh, or in the middle of the night, this is will start coming once again to the upside, uh, which will mean that this double bottom is going to play out. We are going to see a bounce here and hopefully another pull to the upside uh, on the Bitcoin price is possible right now, in my opinion. Uh, also, on the four hourly, we are pretty much at the bottom. So if you look like this in the upcoming hours, I would be expecting a pull to the upside. On the two hourly, it looks like it could be curving once again to the downside. But if this is right now going to curve to the downside, also a double bottom pattern will be formed. So we are going to have two double bottoms. We are going to have it on the two hourly. I mean, four, uh, f uh, three double bottoms on the two hourly, on the three hourly, and also on the four hourly. And because of that, if you have three double bottoms, if you have exponential moving averages acting as a support level, and also ex uh, this uh, uh, pretty much the support level, uh, this trend line right there, which is uh, which if you zoom in, uh, out a little bit, uh, let me just show you this. Uh, let's see this one. Uh, we already have the support level right there, and because of that, if we will have 
three double bottoms, we are going to have uh, support levels because that, in my opinion, there is also a very nice chance that we are going to bounce here and once again pull to the upside. Hopefully this is going to happen. Like I said, if I am going to see hard, high, hard, low being formed on the 30 minute or 15 minute time frame, then I am going to add to my long position on Bitcoin. Uh, let me look maybe on the MACD indicator real quick. Uh, because today I was looking at the bullish divergence. If you watch the video, I was talking about the bullish divergence that was uh, that was going on on Bitcoin. Uh, and here right now, maybe, yeah, also, if this is right now going to start once again coming to the upside, there will be a bullish divergence because this level is actually lower than this one. That means that we pretty much made a higher high. Uh, I mean, uh, higher low, I would say, because maybe those are highs and th those are lows if you look like this. Uh, so we made a higher low, but the price actually made a lower low, which means a bullish divergence is this. And of course, if you right now go with the support levels, you go with the double bottoms, you go with the bullish divergence that may be happening here. Of course, we still need to wait for it to, to, to be confirmed. But if you look right now at the indications right now, uh, we also have a very nice, uh, I mean, I will say chance that we are going to bounce here and pull to the upside. Uh, of course, I will add to my position if I'm going to see another higher high or higher low being formed. Hello, welcome me, Bela Amor, to the stream. Uh, so, uh, on the 15 minute time frame here, we pretty much cannot really see a, bull, a bear flag being formed, but on the 5 minute time frame, maybe some kind of a bear flag could be forming. So, we are going to see how this is going to play out here, uh, because we are having some bullish indications also, which we uh, didn't have before. Uh, I mean, we had the double bottom, but the double bottom on the three hourly when I made the video, uh, let me go on the actors once again, uh, was not that low, but pretty much right now is at the bottom. So I would say it needs to start curving to the upside anytime soon. Uh, so pretty much I think in the two hours or eight, uh, two hours and 18 minutes, then when this will be confirmed, I think that maybe we are going to see a little bit more red and then one, uh, once again green. Uh, or then immediately uh, green, a little bit green, if of course we are going to bounce here. Uh, if you look like this right now, from my long position, I'm already uh, $120 away from my entry, which is very, very nice. Hopefully, like I said, we are going to see a bounce here. Hello, bro. Welcome, Salif Yusuf, to the stream. Or Shola Daniel. Hi, everyone. Hope you all having a lovely weekend. Uh, welcome, man, to the stream. Uh, so currently, it's not weekend for me. Uh, tomorrow will be a, a weekend pretty much in... Three, four, three hours and 20 minutes will be a weekend for me. Uh, today is Friday for me. Uh, so tomorrow, yeah, uh, someone actually uh, on, the, on the Discord server, I don't know, um, I don't know, oh, here, this, Sam. Uh, I don't know what is your username on YouTube channel. Uh, I mean, not on YouTube channel, on YouTube, because the usernames on Google, or I mean on YouTube here and in Discord server are different, so I don't know. Uh, which one are you uh, here in the chat, uh, but you warned me that I should be talking about the volatility uh, coming into the weekend, because on the weekends the volatility is usually much much lower, and if you look like this, um, maybe tomorrow, I mean even the weekends, usually we have some more pulls to the upside, so if you look like this, this would right now perfectly align that maybe we are going to pull to the upside here because it's the weekend tomorrow, but be careful trading tomorrow if you are for example scalping, because there could be more wicks, because less volatility uh, in the market, less volume, because of that pretty much whale can wake up and pump or dump the price, you will have a major wick which could get stopped out you, uh, which can stop out you out of the trade. So be careful scalping tomorrow, uh, of course, you can still trade the hard time frames, like I said, uh, hourly or two hourly, three hourly, four hourly, but scalping tomorrow uh, because it's the weekend. Be a little bit more careful uh, because of the wicks. Um, I think we are bouncing back up. Hopefully, we are, Aaron Montiel. Uh, like I said, 120 away from my uh, entry point. Also, we just saw entered at 12,755, uh, which is very nice. Uh, hopefully we are going to bounce here because technically it is a support level. We are having double bottoms or indicators, bullish divergence on the MACD. Uh, it's not it's not confirmed, but hopefully it will be. And because of that, if you look like this, uh, I think that maybe we could actually bounce here. Uh, but I am still prepared, even if we bounce, I mean, even if we get rejected and pull to the downside, because then, of course, I will be entering another 50% of my long position down there at 12,455 area. US dollars on Bitcoin. Uh, so right now I would like to look at the money flow here because I think it's actually decreasing. Uh, so let me go on a daily first of all. Uh, daily not very useful. We are still, we don't have the red dot here which is still very nice. Uh, here money flow, it's not even decreasing on the 4 hourly which is also very nice. Uh, let's go on 3 hourly, it is decreasing, no trigger waves, not, not looking that bearish for me. 
uh, let's go. I mean, here uh, in the video, I was saying that we are having confirmed bearish divergences on the wave trend indicator or in the uh, on the free version of market cipher. Thanks for the tip, man. No problem, man. Uh, sorry, I'm late. Crypto Dames, welcome to the stream. Did you check on the RSI and money flow? We are going to go through the RSI and money flow in a moment, but before we do that, I would like to look at the uh, free version of market cipher because here we can clearly see that money flow it is actually decreasing which could be a warning point but on the hourly in the video i said that maybe uh, we could expect i was exactly talking about this wave right there in the video and i was saying that if this is going to right now pull to the upset and we are going to have a red dot this could be a trigger wave which could mean that we are going to see a little bit more of a move to the downside and as you can see we are curving to the downside we are having the trigger wave and also you can pretty much see the exact same thing on the 30 minute time frame i was talking about this in the video if you watch it uh, you can see the trigger wave right there and we had a pull to the downside money flow on the 30 minute is actually already in the red so if you look like this money flow in the red we could see maybe a trigger wave right there on the 30 minute time frame uh, money flows hopefully it will be red which would be a trigger point to enter a long position also if you are using market cipher strategy and of course another pull to, pull to the upside on bitcoin uh, would be uh, possible here uh, thanks, bro, bro. No problem, pot. Your target 12,750 12, hit perfectly. Yeah, almost perfectly. Uh, I mean, like I said, I usually do not set my uh, entries and exit exactly at the support and resistance levels, like I already told you many, uh, many times before in the in previous live streams. Uh, so as you can see right there, I was calling for the to, uh, support level 12,725 uh, 12, US dollars. My long entry was 12,750 US dollars. And as you can see, almost, almost perfectly actually hit. So very nice um, that what is happening right there. Hopefully, like I said, we are going to see immediate pull to the upside because we have bullish indications. Uh, and also hopefully this free version of Market Cypher will confirm us the trigger wave maybe on the 30 minute, uh, which would also be a very nice bullish indication here. On the 30 minute, we are already bouncing back. Um, I would say that for the confirmed bounce, I would of course want to see hard high and hard low being formed. And if I am going to see that, I will be entering another 50% of my long position uh, on Bitcoin. Uh, because of course, I want to see hard high, hard lows being formed. Uh, because if you look at this price action that we were forming right now on the hourly, for example, this was a, this was a high, this was a, uh, a lower high and also a lower low, which technically means we are in a downtrend if you look like this. And because of that, I would like to see that a higher high on lower time frames, not on the hourly, on the 15 minute or 30 minute time frame to see a higher high and higher low formed and then I would add to my position. That way, I will make sure that we are going to bounce off this level. Uh, and of course, if the trend will be to the upside, of course, I will add to my long position of Bitcoin because I th still think that we are going to once again pull to the upside in the upcoming future uh, on Bitcoin and also pretty much the same on Ethereum. Um, I'm in a long at 12,950. Uh, 12, Do you think we will pull back up or should I cut losses at this point? Um, so what I would do maybe right now at your point, because you entered at 9, uh, 12,950, which was, let me just mark this for you, 12,950 US dollars was your entry point. So um, if you if you would watch my uh, if you would watch my video, you, uh, I said I said exactly that in this moment at this time, we were around this area at the price action when I recorded the video, I said exactly that. I would not be entering a long or even not a short position because we are in the middle of this channel right there. And because that I said exactly that. Uh, and right now, if you enter right there, uh, right now, I would personally not close my position just yet because of course, like I said, uh, maybe a pull to the upside could be happening right now because we have the support levels. Uh, but maybe you could set your stop loss if you are planning to do that at around below the support level right there Why I would set the support level right there because like I said Maybe this retest of the 200 exponential moving average on the 30 minute time frame and this support level at 12,455 US dollars is possible and if we are going to retest there uh, your entry, uh, I mean, your entry price will be much lower, uh, which of course will be much better. Uh, and because of that, maybe a stop loss below this support level would be possible because like I said, then your entry price will be much lower, which uh, like I said, we have a higher probability then that we are going to bounce here and once again pull to the upside. But man, be careful. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, take your, I mean, set your stop loss at your own risk. Uh, because... I mean, sometimes it's uh, hard to say uh, what I would suggest you because, of course, I'm giving you my personal opinion. 
but of course, if I give, uh, I mean, of course, for example, if you will just see a wake to the downside and then immediate push to the upside, um, then of course I will, I would feel bad because I recommended you the wrong way here. Uh, and because of that, I would like to warn you, set your stop loss at your own, your own risk. I would not like to be responsible for any of your guys' losses. Uh, I'm just thank you, telling you my opinion. So uh, do whatever um, fits your style of trading. And I mean, uh, I'm just giving you my personal opinion, what I would do here. It is likely this is a bear flag. Yeah, on the five minute time frame, um, we could see some kind of a bear flag. Yeah. So maybe this could be another pull to the downside, but like I said, because we are having a double bottom on the Echner Stochastic CG Oscillator on the, oh, on the five minute, we are actually having a double top here. 50 exponential moving average acting as a resistance level. Um, on the four hourly time frame, some kind of a double bottom here and also on the three hourly. And because of that, uh, if you look right now and at indications, bullish divergence on the MACD indicator, uh, I think that we have pretty, pretty strong indications that why we could bounce up here once again. On the five minute, it's a very small time frame, and this bull flag, in my opinion, is not that strong indication why we could pull once again to the downside. Uh, but because it's only on the five minute, maybe if, if it would be on the 15 minute time frame, uh, this would have more power why we could uh, go once again to the downside. But because we have on hard time frames more bullish indications. Uh, right now, I think that we have a higher probability of actually bouncing here and once again pulling to the upside. But I am prepared for both waves, even if we come once again to the downside. Here, 50% of my long position will be triggered. And also, if we are going to make hard, high, hard, low, then of course, I'm going to still uh, open once uh, once again 50% of my long position at this point. Bro, bro, check the three minutes. It's perfect bear flag. I am going to do that right now, man. Thank you very much for the suggestion. Zinters below this, you're the best, man. NFA. Thank you very much, man. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> on the three minutes, you said perfect bear flag. So, may yeah, maybe bear flag could be possible here, but it's only on the three minutes. So, this is pretty much the scalping, uh, scalping time frame. And because of that, I would not, uh, I think that this currently, of course, it can still play out, but. Uh, of course, I think because maybe this, maybe once again a retest of the, the support level and then bounce here, uh, which would mean we are going to make a double bottom pattern, which is also a bullish pattern. Uh, of course, we, you still need to wait for a confirmation of, of this uh, double bottom if it's going to play out. Uh, but maybe because it's a bear flag on the lower time frames, maybe if we go, for example, on the 30 minute or maybe 15 minute time frame, we could maybe go with a bear flag. We broke, to the, we break to the downside. We bounce here because we have double bottoms and bullish divergences, and then pull to the upside. This could be also very much possible here. Uh, but like I said, I'm prepared even if we go up or even if we go down. Thanks, hyper. I closed my short at 12,750 from 13,000. Uh, 13,025. This morning, because of your notification a few minutes ago, I am at work and had my target set to 12,725. And since I, uh, at work, you saved me 100 of my profit and I'm long already. Thank you very much for nice, uh, for nice comments, man. Um, I mean, nice to hear that, but, uh, like I said, I'm not a financial advisor, guys. Take your trades at your own risk. I'm just telling you my trading ideas. Uh, and what is, in my opinion, a little bit more possible. Let me drink some water and let's continue then on Ethereum. But if you just joined the live stream, please hit the like button right now. Let's maybe reach, I don't know, 40 likes right now. Uh, hopefully. Let's go on Ethereum. So on Ethereum, uh, we actually broke one, one level actually more down than I was expecting because on Bitcoin, uh, I had this level, let me just remove this. On Bitcoin, I had only this level because it's pretty much almost the same on Ethereum here. We are, we were forming in the, I mean, we were trading in this channel. So if you look uh, pretty much on Ethereum, we could bounce here uh, if, if the same thing would be happening also on Ethereum. But right now we actually broke, whoops, uh, we broke one level even lower. And because of that right now, I am holding a long position still on Ethereum. Uh, but I am holding 100% of my position that I wanted to open. I opened 50% right there and 50% pretty much at the retest of the... Uh, no, I actually uh, opened, yeah, at the retest of the hourly uh, hourly uh, 50 exponential moving average. This is because that I am right now holding a long position on Ethereum. This was my second target on Ethereum. Like I also said in the video, I would be opening 50% here and 50% at the exponential moving average. Because this exponential moving average is almost perfectly... 
aligning with 0 0.5 Fibonacci level. And as you can see right there, we pretty much retested the support level 402 uh, two US dollars, which was this previous high right there. Uh, but I opened 50% already at the 50 exponential moving average on the hourly time frame, and because of that, I'm currently holding 100% of my long position on Ethereum. So, what could be expected right now on uh, on there? So. It is pretty much, in my opinion, dependent on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin is going to pull to the downside and retest 12,500 US dollars area, Ethereum is going to follow and we are going to see another pull to the downside. Uh, pretty much, I mean, the down, I mean, the downwards move here, uh, in my opinion, could be to 412 uh, two US dollars. Uh, or if this is not going to hold, of course, uh, 392 US dollars. Uh, but because of that, because we are trading currently at around 50 exponential moving average, this would be right now my next target where Ethereum could stop if Bitcoin is going to retest 12,500. Uh, but of course, we are going to see, like I said, I am still holding a long position currently on Ethereum. Uh, and my stop loss currently on Ethereum is below this support level. So my stop loss is at 400 US dollars uh, because maybe right now, we are just going to uh, to pull to the upside like Bitcoin is going to do, hopefully. Uh, but maybe another uh, um, another thing that can happen here is pretty much the same as on Bitcoin. Double bottom pattern could be formed, retest of this level, and then once again pull to the upside. So if you look, my stop loss is pretty much, uh, I would say, almost weak proof here. I mean, wicks, if you look at the wicks, I don't think that we can get a wick to exactly 400 US dollars here because it's pretty low here. Uh, but if this level is get, will get broken, of course, I would be looking to enter another long position at this 320, uh, I mean, 392 US dollars because it's also a support level. So if we are going to go that low, I would also think that we could uh, then open another long position right there. Um, would you say Ethereum is more profitable than Bitcoin for trading? Um, personally, it's pretty much the same. Uh, Bitcoin, I mean, Ethereum is usually following Bitcoin, uh, following Bitcoin, and because of that, they are almost the same as trading. So it doesn't really matter which one you pick. But in my opinion, uh, majority of my trades are on Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum, of course, I'm also trading Ethereum because it's almost doing the exact same thing as on Bitcoin. Uh, but I would say that that's pretty much it. Uh, that it is almost the same in my opinion. Uh, but I will say with your advice and analysis, you have been very helpful, man, especially for we uh, for we that doesn't have much trading experience. Thanks, man. No problem. And this is my intention. So I want to pretty much inform you. What am I thinking? What um, what trading ideas or trades am I going to take? Uh, and hopefully this is helping you for your trading decisions and of course your uh, trades. I agree. 400 US dollars was the breakout. We are back testing the support and boom, bro, bro. Uh, on Ethereum, yeah. So because of that, this is also my stop loss if we are going to break once again to the downside because here uh, I would personally not expect that big of a wake. Of course, tomorrow because it is uh, it is um, weekend because of that maybe less volatility, less volume in the market. Uh, maybe then, of course, we could expect a wake. So I will be careful with my stop loss here. Uh, but hopefully we are just going to bounce here and once again pull to the upside on Bitcoin and pretty much the same thing on Ethereum. I run out of characters. My trading stop was set at 150. Uh, so thanks. You are the best on YouTube because you're, you put your money where your mouth is and state your exact targets and triggers. Most most are bag you, you win. Uh, yeah, the stuff that I put on YouTube, uh, the win rate here, in my opinion, is just amazing. Uh, I, I mean, uh, the Moon and also the um, MM Crypto YouTube channels, they are also putting some kind of signals out there. But uh, because we are pretty much focused on the channel, uh, on this channel, on intraday trading, I usually do not trade off the one day, uh, off of the one day time frame. I usually uh, trade from hourly time frames and also 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Uh, and because of that, I think that my trades here and the calls and the targets uh, are very, very um, accurate in my opinion, of course. Uh, and also you can pretty much uh, go back test my my targets, my stop losses, my entries, and you will pretty much see the win rate. But I think that the win rate is pretty, pretty good uh, for my trades. Uh, I know, of course, I do not know the exact win rate of my uh, trading, but I think that it is uh, that is pretty high. Um, Okay, so on Ethereum, pretty much the same on Bitcoin. I would be expecting that if Bitcoin is going to pull once again to the downside, I would expect pretty much the same on Ethereum. What I forgot to look at on Bitcoin is the money flow and RSI indicator because let me go on the hourly time frame. Nothing very much happening on this one. 
on the two hourly we are just cruising to the downside three hourly all, all this is very nice because we actually got out of the overbought level and we are pretty much at the middle right there this is in my opinion a very nice indication here on the four hourly we just started coming to the downside which is also nice on a daily time frame uh curving i mean curving to the downside i would not say that this is that uh important indication here on the daily time frame but but what is very nice that we got on out of the overbought regions from lower time frames which is in my opinion looking a little bit more bullish than it was before uh let me go on the rsi indicator here on bitcoin uh, let's see here also pretty much the same thing we are curving to the downside and maybe right now this uh, bearish divergence that was happening on the two hourly on the rsi indicator or relative strength index right now play out played out we have a pull to the downside and hopefully right now we are going to see a bounce here and immediate push to the upside on the three hourly let's see also out of the overbought region which is very nice on the four hourly pretty much the same thing we are going out of the overbought region which could be right now mean that hopefully we are going to bounce here on the four hourly time frame i just spotted that maybe a bullish pin bar could be forming another bullish indication and another confirmation why we could actually bounce here off of the support level and once again hopefully pull to the upside do you think bull market will stay for a while what's the max price you think could happen uh so the, i would not actually uh go with the targets the all-time high that we could happen here because of course i don't know i don't have the magic ball uh but uh of course i would say at around e i mean i would of course say more than 20 000 us dollars because if the history is going to repeat uh of course i would expect that bitcoin is going to break the all-time high uh and i don't know i'm not going to guess because i don't re i don't i don't know I don't think anything how far we could actually pull to the upside we are going to see how far we are going uh, and i would not like to go with any guesses because of course technical analysis right now at this point uh we cannot really speculate how far we are going to pull to the upside uh king can you look at link usdt we are going to look at link later man after we do ethereum uh, but it will be very quick and also i would like to look at the ren because someone requested this one before so on ethereum let me just look at the free version of market cipher because here i think we also had the trigger waves yeah right now we had the confirmed uh we have the confirmed bearish divergence here on the hourly time frame on the ethereum five dollars the baddest thank you thank you man for the donation uh i really appreciate it uh so <laughs> very nice you are i think you are one of the first ones i think you are the fifth one that actually donated something to me thank you so much i really really appreciate this thanks hyper what's your take profit target take profit target thirteen thousand four hundred us dollars my first target second target not determined just yet i want to see the next week cpr levels and then i will determine the second target thank you very much the baddest for your donation five dollars thank you you said thx thank you also uh thank you for the support really appreciate it so on the ethereum here we can see a bearish divergence right now we have a curving money flow to the downside and i think i was talking exactly about this uh in my video today on the 45 minute time frame i also think yeah bearish divergence confirmed money flow curving to the downside but here on the 30 minute time frame uh i think that money flow actually curved yeah also the same as in bitcoin um we are in the red and this could be a, an anchor wave which could mean a trigger wave could be possible right there which would mean we are going to bounce higher probability of course we are going to bounce here and once again pull to the upside in the upcoming future also on ethereum pretty much it's happening almost pretty much the exact same thing as on bitcoin anchor wave right there money flow very flat i would just wait for a trigger wave we have nice support levels right there we are having double bottoms on the ahher stochastic so if you look at the probabilities right now in my opinion we are going to in the upcoming future hours maybe uh, once again and pull to the upside uh i think that right now if you look at the probabilities we have a higher probability of pulling to the upside uh four hourly not very useful also not on the four uh, on the four hourly uh so i would also like to look maybe on the um on the uh here on the let's go with the uh, ahler stochastic because i will want i want to see if we actually do have double bottoms here also like we do on bitcoin on four hourly we actually do not have naimi Mal Naim malik with five euros I didn't know donations on YouTube existed. Thanks for your videos. <laughs> Thank you very much for the donation, man. Naim Maliqui, uh, really appreciate this, uh, the support from you guys. Hopefully you get some value of my videos and my live streams. Uh, and thank you so much, the baddest, and also Naim Maliqui for the donation of five euros. Thank you so much for the support. Really appreciate it. Um, 
So on the four hourly, no double bottoms, unfortunately. On the three hourly, also no double bottoms. But of course, because if Bitcoin is going to pull to the upside, I think we the Ethereum is going pretty much to follow. On the Ethereum, we are forming a double bottom actually on the two hourly, which I talked about Bitcoin that maybe here also some kind of a double bottom could happen. Uh, so because of that, I would expect that if this is going to right now, because we pretty much have uh, on Bitcoin double bottoms, on Ethereum double bottoms, we are having nice support levels and maybe also the trigger waves on the free version of Market Cypher will be uh, will be forumed. That way, I think that we have pretty much very nice bullish indications right now why we could bounce here and once again pull to the upside on Bitcoin and also on Ethereum. People showing love. Arun Montiel. Yeah. Thank you very much, the baddest once again, and also thank you very much, Naim Maliqui, for the donations and the support. So, uh, I would like to look also at the RSI on uh, on Ethereum, 2 hourly, pretty much the same on Bitcoin, 3 hourly as the same, and also 4 hourly. Let's go with the money flow real quick, pretty much going to the downside on the 4 hourly, 3 hourly, let's see, 2 hourly, the exact same thing. I would say that this is right now not looking that bearish right now on, uh, I mean, it's not even looking bearish in my opinion on Bitcoin and also not on Ethereum. And I would maybe expect right now that if this is going to right now maybe go to the oversold region, of course, we could see another pull to the upside on Bitcoin and also on Ethereum. We are not at overbought on the hourly, let's go on the 30 minute, 30 minute maybe a bounce here. Uh, Ethereum also, yeah. So like I said, if I would go with the probabilities right now, I think we have a hard probability of once again pulling to the upside and bouncing off of the support regions on Bitcoin and also on Ethereum. Hopefully this is going to happen. Like I said, I am already holding 50% of my long position on Bitcoin and 50% of my long position on Ethereum. And hopefully this is going to play out like I expect it will. Uh, so this is pretty much it with the technical Bitcoin technical analysis and also Ethereum technical analysis. Right now I would like to look at the altcoins that you guys requested me uh, to look at and to analyze. So first one is RAND BTC. Let's go on the RAND BTC. We already did an analysis on this one uh, before and I said that maybe a bounce could here be uh, here could be possible. We got rejected off of the uh, resistance level right there and lower high was made. So I would say that right now, as you can see, those lows right there are pretty much the exact same. So technically, this could mean some kind of a double bottom could be formed, which means that maybe a bounce could be possible. But because of the because of the support level, I would not be entering a long position at this moment on Rand BTC. Why? Because uh, I think that uh, if because those two uh, support, I mean, resistance level right there and support level right there are more important than this one in the middle right there. And because of that, I would be careful right now entering another long position because we just got rejected off of this one. Uh, of course, if we right now go and retest this level once again here, I would be expecting that this will get broken because higher high will be formed and also the pretty much the third retest of the resistance level there will be. Uh, and because of that, if we retest the resistance many times, uh, Every time we retest the resistance level, we have a hard probability of actually breaking it. And because of that, I think that if this is going to bounce here, once again pull to the upside, uh, I would expect it to once again pull to the upside uh, because the probabilities of breaking this one will be higher. Um, this is with this one, but like I said, at this moment, I would not buy it and also not sell it because even uh, we can still right now pull to the downside, uh, which could mean we are going to retest this level. Uh, and because of that, at this moment, Currently, I would not enter a long and also not a short position on RAND BTC. Uh, like I said, a bounce could be possible, but if you are looking maybe to enter a long position on this one, I would maybe trade the breakout off to this resistance level, uh, or maybe if we will, or maybe some kind of a destiny triangle actually could be forming here. Uh, if you look like this, a lower high was formed, and also pretty much the uh, the low is pretty much the same. And because of that, if you look like this, destiny triangle has a higher probability of breaking to the downside. So because of that, personally, I think that if this is going to break to the downside, I think we are going to retest uh, the support level right there, which is 2,326 uh, US dollars right there. Uh, this is, in my opinion, right now, a higher probability what is going to happen. First of all, pull to the downside and then maybe a bounce here could be possible because it is a support level. Uh, and maybe then even if you go on the hard time frame, for example, on the two hourly, maybe then some kind of a double bottom pattern could be formed. And then, of course, one, once again, pull to the upside. But if you are training the double bottom pattern, of course, you are entering at the uh, break of this resistance level, which would mean that you would be entering at around uh, 2,724 US dollars if you would be trading a double bottom pattern. Uh, because you still need to wait that we are going to break this level right there, this resistance level, uh, for a double bottom pattern to be confirmed. What's your target on Ethereum? Uh, this is with uh, RAND BTC. 
uh, we are going to lo look at link usdt in a moment but before we do that i would like to talk about the target uh, i pretty much talked about the target i think in today's video if i'm correct my target for ethereum is the cpr level so if i apply cpr levels uh, you will see that my target on ethereum is 300 and uh, i mean 430 us dollars uh, is my target on Ethereum. Uh, still don't have the second target because I, in my opinion, it is very dependent on Bitcoin. And first of all, I would like to see new CPR levels on Bitcoin because you can clearly see that the weekly CPR levels on Bitcoin were nicely broken. Uh, and because of that, I would like to see where next weekly CPR levels will be. And then I would determine my second price, I mean, my second target on Bitcoin and also on Ethereum. So my first target would be the, the CPR level right there, 430 US dollars, uh, if we are going to immediately right now pull to the upside. Uh, and my second target will be determined what Bitcoin is going to do uh, in the upcoming days. So right now, I would like to look at the, uh, thanks for the rent analysis. No problem, Nine Maliqui. Link BTC, let's go. no, link USDT actually. USDT. Uh, thank you very much, Nine Maliqui, for the support. USDT. Uh, so, here, let me remove the CPR levels real quick. So, we are just retesting this level right there. And because of that, because this level is acting as a resistance level, and if we pretty much zoom a little bit more to the outside, you can see that. Uh, Ethereum has a higher probability of breaking even to the downside here. So I would expect that if you look at the probabilities right now, I would expect a rejection here, a pull to the downside. And because right now, maybe already three, uh, three, um, a three retest of this level i think that maybe even a break through this is very much possible here so if you look like this i would personally not buy the coin at, uh, at that moment or just i would look for example if you are trading this one with uh, leverage i mean uh long or short position i would technically uh, here look at the short position because you can clearly see that we are in the bearish uh pretty much a bearish pattern uh, and because of that it looks like because this is a resistance level we could get rejected here and once again pull to the downside VJ saw five euros. Yes, it is really awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much, man, for the donation. Really appreciate it. Five euros. VJ saw five euros. Nine Maliqui and five dollars. The baddest. Thank you all, guys, for the donation and the support. Very appreciated. VJ saw. Thank you very much. It is really awesome. I mean, Bitcoin and Ethereum currently, uh, in my opinion very looking very very uh, bullish not bearish bullish uh, hopefully we are going to see another nice pull to the upside in the upcoming future on bitcoin and also on ethereum uh, like i was talking on the uh, usdt a uh, bull flag on uh, on link usdt uh no link usdt i think it is actually forming a bear some kind of a bear flag uh so let me look at this two hourly we are at the two hourly link usd so where do you see a bull flag here i do not see any bull flags i mean if you zoom for example a little bit more in maybe you could see yeah maybe yeah this could be a bull flag so if you look like this this could be actually a bull flag uh but i think that if you look at the low uh, if you look at the hard picture here on the two hourly time frame this is actually a uh yeah that part so if you look at the bigger picture right there this is actually a bearish pattern which has a hard probability of breaking to the downside uh, but if you are planning right now to trade this, in my opinion, I would trade this one as a short position because this is a bearish pattern and it has a higher probability of breaking to the downside and maybe set a stop loss up here, of course, if we are going to then break to the upside. Uh, because, of course, we still have the chance of breaking to the upside, but because uh, this is a bearish pattern, we have a higher probability of actually getting rejected here. So I would trade this one like this. I would currently not look to enter a long position because of this bull flag that is happening here on the... Um, uh, on the link BTC, I mean link USDT, and also if you look at the past, for example, we could technically see also here some kind of a bull flag being formed, and of course we broke it to the downside, uh, and because of that right now I would be careful looking, uh, entering a long position, uh, but of course if we go uh, once again to the pull to the upside, I think the target is already here, that I had it uh, written here on the 13, uh, 13 US dollars and 11 cents would be my target on a, a link if we are going to pull to the upside, uh, but because if you look at the uh, bigger picture here, uh, it is forming a bearish, uh, I mean bearish pattern, which has a hard probability, of course, of going to the downside. And I think that uh, you would have, if you are trading right now, you would have a hard probability of getting rejected here and going to the downside on the uh, link USDT. Uh, set a stop loss above the wick right there and then you will be set. 
uh, if you're wanting to trade the breakout out of this bull flag, of course, if you're going to pull to the upside. Uh, you could also pretty much when you, your position hits your stop loss maybe enter a long position because then this resistance level will be uh, will get um, will get destroyed i mean uh, will get um broken and of course then you can expect a target of 13 uh, or, or of 13 dollars and 11 cents so maybe when your stop loss if of course we are going to pull to the upside will get uh broken to the upside i mean if your stop loss will get hit uh i would then maybe consider entering a long position because of course this pattern will then not be any more valid and this would act as a support level a bounce here could be possible and then a 13 uh us dollars and 11 cents uh, would be possible in my opinion not a financial advisor uh, thanks, man. If BTC will pull down more, we are looking at 12,500 or 12,000 US dollars. Uh, 12, US dollars. But if we bounce back, we will get to 13,400, uh, 13, right? Um, I would say no. If we are going, yeah. If we are going to retest 12,500 US dollars, I think that the the my target would still be 1,300 for uh, 13,000. 400 us dollars but if we are going for example to retest 12,000 us dollars i would then reconsider my targets uh, about bitcoin of course i would wa want to see if we are going to bounce here or if we are just going to bounce even here uh, but if we are going to retest the 12,000 us dollars area uh, i would then look to see another target on bitcoin uh, but before uh, we are going to consider the targets i would want to see first of all of course a drop because this is a pretty big drop from 12,800 to 12,000 us dollars so then uh, when we are going to be at 12,000 US dollars, then I would be looking for a target how far uh, we could go up or even down. Because if you look like this, if then uh, we are going to go once again to the 12,000 US dollars, we are going to have this resistance level, which could mean that this also could be formed a lower high, uh, which could be a bearish indication. So I would be careful right now. Uh, uh, I mean, I would not say that 13,400 uh, US dollars would be the target if we are going to 12,000 US dollars. Uh, and then I would be looking uh, at the targets when and if we are going to see this level right there. But like I said, 50% of my long position will be entered if we come uh, once again to 12,455 US dollars area. Lol, did not know you are from Slovenia. Me too. Uh, guys, can you all hear me? <laughs> can you all hear me? Please uh, think we lost you. Um, my computer... Please tell me if you can hear me, someone. Uh, because I don't know if you can hear me right now. Think we lost you. Guys, can you hear me? Hopefully you can. Test one, two, three. Yes, okay, nice. Yes, we can hear. Thank you very much for the confirmation. Um, sorry for that uh, interruption, uh, but if you were in one of my live streams, I, I think two weeks ago, um, my computer just blue screened once again. I am having some trouble here. Here, I don't know what is wrong, uh, but <laughs> one to three, yeah. Uh, my computer blue screened right now and restarted. So sorry for the interruption. Hopefully we are back right now. Uh, I don't know, I'm having some trouble here. Uh, I think two weeks ago or something like that, my computer also blue screened, restarted, and of course the stream was off. So hopefully right now you can hear me. Uh, everything works. Um, yes, we can hear you. PC crashed. Exactly, man. Across Canada, welcome to the stream. Crypto trade. Duh. Welcome, man, to the stream. Get a new one. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't really need a new one, but I think that I need to resolve the problem that is happening here. Uh, I think I have a pretty good computer and because of it, I am not really... Uh, thinking of getting a new one, but I need to fix something because clearly something is wrong because it just randomly crashes sometimes. I think uh, I would say once every two weeks or three weeks it, it actually crashes. I don't know what is wrong, but hopefully we are back again on the stream. Uh, I was talking about with the uh, thanks for anal an analyzing flash 3R. 
no problem and also Malhiat lol did know you are from Slovenia yeah I am actually from Slovenia pozdravlje na streamu če gledaš uh, Dzinters Balodis house temps blue screen usually a hardware uh, I mean the temps I think they are very uh, I think they are good uh, but I mean you get the error code on the uh, you get the error code code on the um, when the computer blue uh, crashes uh, but I just missed it right now so uh, I will need to look at the problem later. Uh, hopefully it will not repeat again, uh, but we're going to see what is going to happen with my computer here because, I don't know, something is wrong. Pozdravljen, uh, welcome man, Melchiat. Or a driver, you need help with that? No, I actually do not need any help with the computers because I actually built my, uh, my computer myself. Uh, and because of that, uh, I pretty much know a lot of, about the computers, about the, I don't know, about the, I would say, technical stuff, so because of that I really do not need uh, help with that. King Simogoce Domove Slovenia, yes, I am Flash 3R. Uh, Sami Slovenia, tako. <laughs> Too much junk folder, I have a tool. RAM is overheat, to, to read blue screens. I mean, I know that you get a error code when the computer re restarts, so hopefully I can uh, take a picture of it and I will Google it, what is wrong. Uh, but I just missed it because usually it's just so fast. Uh, the blue screen is just a couple of seconds and then it, it, it disappears and because I need to have my phone with me and uh, take a picture uh, of the error code and then I'm going to try to fix what is wrong. Do you think we continue pull to the upset or bear flag will play out? So I think that on the 5 minute time frame uh, the bear flag could still play out and I think that if this is going to play out I think that we can pretty much retest the 12,725 US dollars if this is going to play out of course because we have more bullish indications in my opinion. Uh, because of the uh, because of the double bottoms on the Ahern Stochastic CG oscillator on the three hourly and also on the four hourly time frame, pretty much happening the same on Ethereum. And because of that, I would expect and also bull uh, bull flag. I mean not bull flag, uh, bull bullish pin bar here on the four hourly time frame. And because of that, I would expect that if this is going to happen here, uh, a bounce here once again uh, could be possible at around twelve thousand seven hundred and twenty-five US dollars. PC must race. Pozdravljen prijatel. Jasem is Kamnika. Uh, welcome to coming. I'm actually uh, I'm living near Maribor. You don't need a picture. Uh, you, I mean, I think you do because I cannot remember the numbers uh, in the error code. So maybe if you have the tool, yeah, maybe if you have the tool, maybe you can actually send the tool to me uh, in the Discord servers. I mean, uh, DM me the Discord. Uh, DM me in the, the my uh, the link from this for the software, and maybe I will actually use it because uh, I need to. I need to figure out what is wrong immediately because I don't want stream crashes randomly uh, and because of that this would be very helpful if you, if you can just send me a DM uh, and I will look at this later. Just to the Blizzum MB. Uh, welcome Malhiat. Melhiat. <laughs> very interesting that we have right now, I know that right now we have three Slovenian viewers on the channel here. Melhiat, then we have Flash 3R and also 420 is a Slovenian uh from slovenia so very nice uh i post a tool to discord in a few minutes okay thank you very much man for helping me out so right now uh and a mexican weaver oh nice arun montiel welcome <laughs> uh no problem <laughs> i think right now we have three viewers not right now at the moment but i know three viewers that are from slovenia right now so I would like to look at this one right now. Ethereum is on track to have a higher annual transaction volume than Bitcoin for the first time. 2020 will be the first year Ethereum will have more transactions than Bitcoin. The huge development of DFI in the crypto space is undoubtedly a huge factor of a factor contrib contributing to this. So, uh, of course, in my opinion, why Ethereum has so many transactions because of the uh, DFI projects, because the fees on Ethereum right now are much higher than on Bitcoin actually, and because of that, only because of the DFI projects, Ethereum right now has higher uh, transactions uh, in 2020. For example, if you look 2019, 18, of course, transactions on Ethereum were much lower than uh, if you compare this with Bitcoin, but if you look right there, 
in my opinion, this is only because of the DFI projects. Uh, and in my opinion, this is not really scary for Bitcoin uh, because I think that Bitcoin is much better because of the lower fees, of course, because I mean lower fees right now because of course Ethereum has uh, higher fees because of those, all of those DFI projects. But in my opinion, this is not really that scary for Bitcoin, uh, even if right now Ethereum has a higher, uh, I mean more uh, transactions uh, in 2020. So. I would like to look at this one. Active Bitcoin addresses at highest since 2017 20k price record. So the number of active addresses, uh, entities or clusters of addresses controlled by a single network participant jumped to 388,000 on Thursday, the highest since December 9th, 2017. So if you know what's happened in December 2017, we had our all time high. So if you look at this, uh, if you look at this article right now, or even if this uh, this picture, you can see that if this is going to repeat, because it looks like we are pretty much uh, on the way to reaching another all time high in the upcoming months, in my opinion, very much possible. Hopefully we are going to do that. Uh, I think that because of the transactions and because the transaction, the transactions were so high also in 2017 when we reached, I mean not transactions, uh, the addresses were so high in 2017 when we reached the all-time high. I think that this is in my opinion very much possible in the upcoming future on Bitcoin that we are going to see another all-time high formed here. And also because of the market cycle that I already showed you many times here, market cycle here, the picture here. Uh, we are pretty much at the beginning of this picture that happens every four, uh, four, uh, four years and we are pretty much at the beginning. And if this is going to repeat, of course, we could expect a major growth in the upcoming uh, days or weeks or months uh, on Bitcoin and pretty much the same on Ethereum. So this is with this one and also this one. For the first time since 2018, Bitcoin balances on exchanges fell below 2.5 million. So. On October 20th, 2020, the amount of Bitcoin held at major exchanges fell below uh, 2.5 million BTC for the first time in two years. So if you look like this, uh, in, 2000, in 2017, in July and this in January here, you can see that the this uh, this uh, green, I mean not orange one, balance on exchanges is was actually low, I mean was actually increasing here. But right now it looks like it is actually decreasing uh, which in my opinion is could be uh, an in indication, a bearish indication in my opinion. Why? Because you can also see that we had this dump to the downside here and the, the this was pretty much flat here. And right now we can see that this is majorly decreasing, uh, which hopefully uh, people are not selling, of course, uh, selling their Bitcoin, but they are maybe just moving them into the hardware wallets. Hopefully this is happening uh, because on the exchanges, this is only data from exchanges uh, and hopefully they are just moving them uh, into the hardware wallet. People are slowly realizing what some of us have known for a while. BTC is the only sound mo monetary policy right now and you cannot afford to depart from the best performing asset of the decade. As long as exchanges refuse to give their clients more, they will leave them and come to Celsius. We just crossed 2.7 billion in deposits since launch two years ago. We would not be growing so fast unless we did more to our customers uh, than exchanges. Uh, also this one, Bitcoin on exchanges, exchange, for example, Bitfinex, uh, we have the, um, this, uh, the, the pretty much from February to October, all of those is actually decreasing. That means that people are usually, I mean, if you look like this, uh, people are moving their coins from exchanges to another exchange or to another wallet, which means hardware wallet or software wallet or whatever. So if you look at this, that pretty much means that they are maybe not even trading it and maybe just holding it for longer term, uh, which of course would be nice, uh, but hopefully they are not selling it because if they will start selling Bitcoin, uh, of course, this would be a bearish indication. Uh, and also this one, adding coins and reducing fees. Will BitMEX revival efforts help despite the mandatory KYC? So if you know BitMEX actually uh, right now got sued, that's the first thing and also they actually uh, released this KYC uh, KYC thing. So because of that people are leaving BitMEX and we also look at the news uh, where people are actually going. So people actually switched. I think 30% of the people that were using BitMEX actually go went to Binance, uh, which is also very interesting. But here, a couple of days ago, the exchange announced a fee reduction on its linear futures contracts. First, the take fee 
uh, fees are reduced to 0.075% on the alt XBT linear future contracts, while also adjusting the maker fee to 0.025%. Uh, minus 0.025% actually. Both exchanges are to take effect today, October 23rd, 2020. This exchange, which applies to all future old, old XBT listings, is in, uh, intended to align the fee structure across our products and optimize the overall training experience from this pro uh, product segment. Uh, reads the announcement. So um, that's pretty much the exact same fees or the taker fees are the exact same and also the maker fees are the exact same as also on the Bitcoin futures trading. So they're pretty much adjusting them uh, to be the same. Uh, in my opinion, they are not really um, uh, trying to survive here because I mean, they're just adjusting the fees to be exactly the same, which they already had. So I think that I mean, this could be a thing that they, they are maybe trying to get the the users once again on their platform, but because they are they are having the KYC and also the problems with the um, sue, I mean, the yeah, with the, because someone sued them, I think that in my opinion, BitMEX will right now pretty much uh, lose uh, traders. So, and also here, uh, this one, uh, BitMEX will be adding Polkadot, Binance Coin and YFI for trading towards the end of the month. In addition, the exchange is also reducing its fees. Are these survival efforts following the CFTC clash? Yeah, uh, I think that, I mean, if you are trading on BitMEX, go away from BitMEX. Uh, I have down below links where you can sign up on buy with Binance and also Coinbase if you want to buy Bitcoin. They are all affiliate links. Thank you very much if you use them. Lol rip. Yeah, in my opinion, Bitmax right now, it's not in the very good uh, state or stage. So guys, uh, this would be it for today's live stream. Tomorrow, a brand new video about Bitcoin technical analysis and also Ethereum technical analysis will come out. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you have post notifications. Uh, turn on, have them on all so you get notified when I release a video and hopefully when I go live. But also you get notified in the Discord server under, under the videos right there. Uh, you will have the notifications when I post a new uh, video and also when I schedule a live stream. Do you hold any DFI coin? No, I do not. I only hold Bitcoin and some Ethereum uh, for longer term and I also day trade altcoins. That means that I'm currently in a trade with RSR. Um, if that lower target doesn't reach, what would be your second re-entry? Thanks for everything, bro, bro. So I said that in also in the video that I would be looking for a higher high and higher low to be formed because then I would ca I can confirm that we are going to bounce off of the, the support level and that way we could make a higher high, which would mean this would be a bullish trend. And then at a higher low, I would be looking to enter another 50% of my long position on Bitcoin. Currently, I re uh, I entered a long position at the wake right there at 12,750 uh, 12, US dollars. Uh, and I would be looking to re-enter, I mean, to add to my position, 50% to my position, if I would see a higher high and a higher low form. That way, I will be a confirmation that we are bouncing here and I will be then looking to re, uh, to add to my long position on Bitcoin. On Ethereum, I'm holding already 100% what I wanted to, to be, uh, to enter, I mean, 100% uh, of the position that I wanted. Uh, because we reached the support level right there, we broke it and right now we are at the support level. So we are going to see what is happening here, what will happen here with Ethereum and also Bitcoin. But in my opinion, we have more bullish indications why we could actually bounce here and hopefully continue our way to the upside to our first target, which is 13,400 US dollars. Zhivyo Lepozdrao is Beograda, great analysis as always. Thank you very much, Slobodan Adjelkovic. Adjelkovic. Uh, you are Serbian, nice. Mi bela amor, thank you, Hyper. No problem, thank you for watching. HNS on BTC USD 2 hour. Uh, HNS, what does that mean? Stop. Uh, Pozdravljen, welcome, Flash 3 R. Excellent, have a good evening, bro, bro, thanks. No problem, thank you for watching, pot. Head and oh, hide and shoulders, yeah. Thanks, man. If BTC will pull down more, we are looking at 12,500 or 12,000. But if we bounce back, we will get to 13,400, right? So I think so, yeah. Uh, on the hourly time frame, I think that if Bitcoin is going to once again uh, break this level and retest this level, we have a very high chance of actually uh, bouncing here because uh, fever tracing aligning here, uh, support level aligning here because of this head and shoulders pattern that already happened here. And also, I think that the exponential moving average, yeah, I think on the four hourly, if I'm correct, no, four hourly, uh, th uh, 30 minutes. 
Uh, 30 minute time frame, uh, 50, uh, 200 exponential moving average almost perfectly aligning here because of that. I think if you look at the probabilities, a probability of going, uh, I mean, uh, at bouncing here is very, very high. And because of that, like I said, I would be entering 50% of my position uh, also if we go once again down here. But if we will not go down there, if we are going to see higher, high, higher low form, I will also add to my long position. Uh, hand shoulder. So um, you said uh, on hand shoulders on BTC two hourly time frame. So let me go on two hourly. Uh, no, at this moment, I would not say this is actually a head and shoulders pattern because I would still like to see some more price action here. Uh, for example, right now, of course, a pull to the upside and then maybe a head and shoulders pattern could be here. Uh, but at this moment, I would not be looking to uh, say that this could be a head and shoulders pattern. Another pull to the upside could, uh, needs to be formed here. And then, of course, a pull to the downside. Uh, which would mean that we could be developing a head and shoulders pattern, but of course, more price, more more price action needs to be formed. We are going to look at Bitcoin and also Ethereum uh, tomorrow, uh, where we are going to have more price action, and then I will be determining maybe if we could be developing a head and shoulders uh, or not. Thank you very much for your suggestion. Thanks, Hyper, for showing everything you did. Uh, thank you all, guys, for watching. Actually, uh, Derek Tech, thank you for uh, watching, everyone. Thank you for the donations once again. Um, thanks again, VJ So for five euros. Thank, thank you, Nine Maliqui, and also the Badass for your donations. You are awesome. Thank you very much for the support. Thank you all guys for watching. Hopefully you also uh, caught. Uh, I mean, hopefully you also maybe. Uh, went into a long position right there because I think this could be right now a very nice long, long opportunity for Bitcoin. Of course, if we come once again to the downside here, I will be adding more to my position. Thank you all guys for watching. Have an amazing day. See you tomorrow with a video and also the live stream. Peace out.